here, I could confidently say that slow cooking is the best method of cooking. Just because you dump the ingredients into your slow cooker, it does all of the work for you all day. And at the end of the day, you have a delicious meal to enjoy. Today, I'll be sharing six new dump and go recipes with you that are so good. You're going to be making them week after week. Let's get to my kitchen and let's get started. To start us off today, we're making this roast with potatoes and corn. This one is not your average slow cooker recipe, I promise, but just trust it, it really will turn out. I added my large chuck roast into my slow cooker. Now I'm pouring a packet of beefy onion soup mix over the top. Next, I'm going to sprinkle a half a packet of brown gravy mix over that. I used the reduced sodium brown gravy mix, but you could use the regular one too. Now I added one sliced yellow onion into my slow cooker and I'm pouring two cups of beef broth right in there. Now I have a packet of frozen corn on the cob. Just wait to see what I do with it. Anyway, I have a large sheet of parchment paper. I'm hugging the roast with the parchment paper and you wanna make sure the parchment paper is like overlapping on the side. You wanna make sure it's kind of big, but place those pieces of corn on the cob right into your slow cooker. I used four pieces. Now I have four russet potatoes. I did clean my potatoes and poke holes in them, sprinkle salt and pepper all over the top. This is going to cook on low for about eight to nine hours or until the potatoes are tender and the roast is completely cooked through. And then here's what it looks like once everything's cooked through. Just remove the potatoes and corn to a plate and then discard that parchment paper and there you go. You basically cooked an entire dinner in your slow cooker. The reason why we didn't cook the potatoes and corn like with the roast is because we're making them their own thing. So we don't want everything to taste exactly like the roast. We made baked potatoes on the side and a side of corn. This really is a magical slow cooker dinner. And here's my plate of food. That roast is fall apart tender. It is like buttery soft and oh so flavorful. Those baked potatoes are just delicious. We topped ours with a little bit of butter, cheese, sour cream, and some salt and pepper. And then that corn is just delicious, especially at this time of year. My entire family family enjoyed this meal. Now we're making this Tuscan chicken and potato stew. On my cutting board, I am going to dice three carrots into smaller pieces. Next, I'm going to slice two ribs of celery. I'm also going to dice one yellow onion and a pound of golden potatoes. Just cut those potatoes into kind of like smaller bite-sized pieces. Now over to my slow cooker, I'm going to add in my two chicken breasts, or you could use boneless, skinless chicken thighs if you'd like. Now I'm adding in the vegetables that we diced up along with two tablespoons of minced garlic. Now add in two cups of chicken broth or you could use vegetable broth along with a can of petite diced tomatoes. And then for the seasonings, I added in two teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of garlic powder and onion powder. And then I'm going to add in a teaspoon of oregano, Italian seasoning, dried basil, dried rosemary, and then a half a teaspoon of dried thyme. Time. There's a lot of seasonings, but this is oh so flavorful. Give this a stir and let this cook on low for six hours. We like our stews to be a little bit on the thicker side, so I'm making a cornstarch slurry to thicken up the stew. So I have about a fourth a cup of water. I added two tablespoons of cornstarch to the water and just give it a stir until that cornstarch is dissolved. You don't want the cornstarch to become thick and clumpy in your stew, but now that my chicken's cooked through, I'm removing it to a plate and just shred that chicken up into small pieces. You could also dice your chicken if you prefer diced chicken in your stew but after that chicken was nice and shredded I added it back into my slow cooker. Now you're going to want to add in that cornstarch slurry along with a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. That balsamic vinegar just gives it like a little kick. Ooh, delicious but give this a stir and let this cook on high for about 20 minutes to thicken up this stew. Even if you're not the biggest soup or stew type of person in the world, I really think you should still give this a try. It is so hearty filling and delicious. Also, you could add ingredients to this or subtract ingredients. I did serve this alongside of some garlic parmesan toast that I made up super quick. 
Now we are making my family's favorite slow cooker fiesta chicken. So into my slow cooker, I'm adding three chicken breasts. Next, to add in two tablespoons of taco seasoning along with one can of corn. I didn't drain my can, but if you want yours like a little bit thicker, make sure you do drain your corn. Now I'm adding in one can of Rotel. The same goes for the Rotel. If you want it thicker, just drain your Rotel. Now I'm adding in one drained and rinsed can of cantalini beans. On the very top, I added an eight ounce block of cream cheese. If you want less cream cheese, just add half of the block or just a tablespoon. Anyway, I cooked this on low for six hours. Once the chicken was cooked through, I removed it to a plate and now I'm just going to shred the chicken into smaller pieces or you could cube it if you'd like. Add the shredded chicken back into your slow cooker and the cream cheese will look a little strange and clumpy, but don't worry, just give this a really good stir. It's going to incorporate in beautifully and look nice and smooth, but if you have my cookbook, just pull out your cookbook because this recipe is on page 162. So just follow the recipe in my cookbook and if you don't have a cookbook yet, you could get one below this video. I have it linked for you. My cookbook has over 100 easy affordable recipes. There's eight sections and a colored photo for every single recipe in this book. I can't wait for you to get yours, but we like to serve ours over tortilla chips, but you could serve yours like in a burrito for tacos, and we like to top ours with a little bit of cheese, tomatoes, onion, and avocado, but top yours with anything that you love. This one is for all of my meatless meal friends. We are making these salsa tacos now. So into my strainer over the sink, I'm going to add about a cup and a half of dry lentils. You could add any type of dry lentils that you have or that you could find at your store. Just rinse those lentils and look through them. Just make sure they are nice and clean, just like you would with like dry beans. After that, add your lentils into your slow cooker. Next, you're going to want to add in three cups of vegetable broth or you could use chicken broth. Next, I'm going to add in a cup and a fourth of salsa. You could use any type of salsa you like. You could use like tomato salsa or like salsa verde salsa. Anything will work well. Next, I added in one diced yellow onion along with a teaspoon of soy sauce and then a tablespoon and a half of taco seasoning. This is so easy. Give this a stir and cook this on low for about six to seven hours or until the lentils are tender. Once the lentils are tender, you could give this a stir and then you could serve this up as like a burrito bowl or you could serve this up in tortillas like we did. If you are looking for a meatless meal, this one is absolutely for you. Those lentils are so high in protein. They're a great meat substitute. They're also very, very affordable. We topped ours with diced tomatoes, avocado, cilantro, and sour cream, but top yours with anything that you love. This one is one of my all-time favorite slow cooker dinners. This enchilada pasta is so phenomenal. To my slow cooker, I added in two chicken breasts. Next, I'm adding in a four ounce can of diced green chilies, or you could use jalapenos. Then I added in 28 ounces of red enchilada sauce, along with a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of oregano, cumin, and chili powder. I'm going to put the lid on top of this and cook this on low for six to seven hours. Also, this recipe is on page 150 in my cookbook. This is just a tried and true favorite recipe of my family's. It really is so good. But once the cooking time was up to a pot of boiling water, I'm adding in 16 ounces of rotini pasta. Just cook that pasta according to the package instructions. Now I'm going to shred up the chicken. I'm just using my electric hand mixer just to make it go super duper quick. Now I'm going to add in three fourths cup of sour cream or you could use a plain Greek yogurt if you'd prefer to do like a little bit higher protein, less fat. Now I also added in one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. If you're not a cheese fan, just don't add the cheese in. Now I'm adding in the cooked strained pasta. Give this a good stir and you could serve it up. My favorite way to serve this enchilada pasta is with like cold taco toppings on top. The cold mixed with like the hot dinner is just like amazing. You really need to try it out. If you haven't tried this enchilada pasta, try it and top it with like avocado, diced onion, diced tomato, and cilantro with lime juice. It's so good. 
Now we're making this sun-dried tomato chicken. So into my slow cooker, I'm adding three chicken breasts. For all of my recipes, you could always double them for more people or half them for less people, just depending on how much you want to make. I sprinkled this chicken with a dash of salt and pepper. Now I'm spreading on about two tablespoons of minced garlic. This will give it a lot of great flavor. Now I'm adding about a third a cup of sun-dried tomatoes right over that chicken. And this is the type of sun-dried tomatoes that I used. I just found this at Walmart, but you could use any type of sun-dried tomatoes. Next, I'm adding a 15 ounce can of drained quartered artichoke hearts along with one diced yellow onion. Put the lid on top and cook this on low for six hours. Once the cooking time was up, I sprinkled about two cups of fresh chopped spinach over the top. Continue to cook this for an additional 20 minutes to wilt that spinach down. Then we served this over a bed of mashed potatoes, but you could serve this over rice or cold whole flour rice, really anything that you enjoy. That juice from like the slow cooker over the mashed potatoes gives the mashed potatoes like so much immense flavor, but this is so flavorful and tender. It really is a delicious lower carb dinner. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for being here today and I would love to have you here longer. So make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.